something for you today. Wow, if I'd have known there was this many of you, I would have prepared a story. I just had a handout for you. Hmm. Pardon me? Okay, all right. So what is today? Palm Sunday. What happens on Palm Sunday? Anybody know? What did we just do? Wave palms. Do you think anybody's done this ever before? No. No. Nobody's ever done this before. Pass way down there to the end. I think somebody's done this before. We remember Jesus going into Jerusalem into a holy place and the people cut down branches and leafy plants from around and they wave it because that's what you did when somebody important came to town. Something important happens this week. Today starts with Palm Sunday. And what happens next Sunday? Oh, I was going to tell you, you have to come back and find You're going to have a sleepover. <laughs> that is a great lead-in for resurrection, that people rise from a sleepover, renewed and engaged for life. Josiah. And it's also <laughs> April Fool's Day. You decorate the cross. Amen. So we have a full week ahead. Can you join me in a quick prayer? And then you'll go for your story in the other room. Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this week. Bless us as we walk through these days. May your grace, May your grace and, goodness and goodness be with us. Be with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Next time I'll be a little better prepared for you. <laughs> but I think... Okay, all right. On your way. You can come back and get it after church. You can come back and get more than one. All right. Yes, later. Amen. We now listen to the word. going to be in trouble if I lose that. A reading from Isaiah, the 50th chapter, beginning with the fourth verse. I speak to God. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from the insult and spitting. The Lord God <coughs> helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint and I know I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The second reading from Psalms chapter 31, verses 9 through 16, responsively. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes, my eyes consume with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is through grief, and my ears are sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. A reading from Philippians, the second chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but into himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. A couple of words to prepare for our reading. Um, last year, the two chapters of Mark were all printed in the bulletin, and they're not today. Uh, the trees won out this week, um, not to mention not having an administrative assistant. So uh, we, we do have a team of three leaders uh, that I trust will uh, aid in your listening. Uh, it is a lengthy reading, but uh, an important reading as we, uh, as we enter and proceed into this Sunday of the Passion. So I'm not going to invite you to rise. If you want to stand for all two chapters, I, you're entitled to do that. Um, but I'll proceed with the gospel acclamation and then invite uh, our other readers forward. Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. There God also highly exalted him and gave him, him the name that is above every name. Passion of our Lord according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as they sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone, why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, 
Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher ask, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go to you in Galilee. And Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. <clears throat> he came and found them sleeping and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? 
Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went out and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to on him, to blindfold him, to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. 
And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time, and then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered them, You say so. Then the chief priests <laughs> accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? for he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. <coughs> Pilate spoke to them again, then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, they spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled, a pa they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and they divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priest, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others! He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. 
those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bypassers heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who had also himself been waiting expectedly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In some congregations, the Passion reading is the sermon for the day. But in doing my history, uh, I came to understand that you do still have a short sermon, shorter, <laughs> shorter sermon on Palm Sunday. I did it my way. So you may recall as the song bellowed out by Frank Sinatra, and I dare to add to that many of us can identify with doing life our way, free to live and act my way. Yet the last three weeks have surfaced the ugly face of that kind of thinking in this community in one named Mark Anthony Condit. Eerie words as we enter the start of this Holy Week and we hear another power yielding person, a pilot protecting his power and control and doing it his way. And then we hear this morning's story of Jesus of Nazareth living out what he hears 
as God's way. God's way of challenging the powers of that time and of our time. One of befriending the stranger. Helping the lowly. Aiding the stranger. Welcoming the outsider. Living with a passion for mercy and justice and shalom. So I ask this question, what is our way to do this week? What do we hear in this thing called life in the way of Jesus? It is our time of self-reflection this Holy Week. Looking in the mirror to confess our fixation on my way my convenience, my busy life, my self-interest. And yet within that sounds and arises this word of Jesus, the crucified and risen one. In the past three weeks, especially in the last week, Amongst the most challenging yet hopeful words that I heard spoken amidst the wake of devastation by Mark Condit came from the mayor of Austin, challenging our ways of doing life. Walk across the street and get acquainted with your neighbor. I hear it as an echo of the life lived by one who is hung on a cross, who said time after time, love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. It recalls for me the words of another less glamorous singer than Frank Sinatra, one named Mr. Rogers. Please, let me be your neighbor. Yesterday yielded a new counter-movement across this nation from another unexpected <clears throat> leader and leadership. Youth on a march for their lives challenging the pilots of our time who wish to simply preserve what is. And maybe you wonder like I, is it in the civic world a beginning of a resurrection into something new? Arising amid seeing pilots ways of protecting personal power and of now saying, Enough is enough. This Holy Week, Jesus calls us from doing church in comfortable ways and joining in another march, a march of deeper spiritual life in this time in our neighborhoods. Amen. <clears throat> Invite you to stand. Our sacred our hymn of the day, number three hundred fifty one. <laughs> 